Welcome to my channel, fellow Rotorheads. Thank you for joining me for part seven of the do-it-yourself collective series. This is the last part, and it's been a lot of parts. I have to admit, a lot of parts went into this. And if you've joined me all the way through, I respect your effort and your commitment. If you've managed to build everything, I think you will find the control to be precise and accurate. Two things that are very important in controlling a helicopter. Sloppy controls leads to injury and death in the helicopter world. And so in this installment, we're gonna be buttoning things up and making things look pretty. We're gonna install the ground wire and close up the outlet box. We're gonna install the strut that helps support the collective arm. And we're going to mount it to your chair. Now, in my case, we're mounting it to my chair. You may have to choose a slightly different way to do it to your chair, depending on the construction of your chair. So we'll see how that goes. So turning our attention to the ground wire, you recall that we attached one end to the circuit board on the inside of the outlet box, and there are two terminal ends still flopping around. Unwrap the tape on those terminal ends and put one of the flange screws through it back into the flange, and the final ring terminal gets put through one of the screws that holds the outlet box lid on. And my apologies, this particular video snip should have been included in part six where we attach the ground wire to the circuit board. Now I want to say that although these videos were shot in the order that I did the functions, they're arranged in these series of videos in the ways that make the most sense. So in some examples, you may see something that we haven't officially done yet, so ignore those things and focus on what I am talking about. In this case, Although you see the strut installed here, we're not doing that just yet, but we are focusing on the little notch on the back sideboard that allows the USB cord to exit the box. Use a drill or a hacksaw or some other method to cut a channel in the back sideboard in this location. The notch should be about a quarter inch deep all the way through the board, deep enough to seat the USB cord, but not so deep that it just flops around. Now we can turn our attention to the second strut mount, which we will attach to the bottom sideboard. It might be easier to detach the sideboard in order to install the mount. I'd like to recommend that you add a third hole here because it will give you some flexibility on the amount of force the strut is exerting on the collective arm. Once you've got the strut mounted, go ahead and put the board back into the box and screw it in. The strut mounts should be facing each other like this. You can just pop the strut in, shaft end facing up. Now by this point, the collective arm should be completely assembled with the grip and the throttle. And so it should be at its full weight, and you can test to see if the strut and the weight of the collective arm balance each other. What it shouldn't do is pop back up into your hand if you push it down. If it does do that, it means that the strut is pushing too hard, and you can reduce the force by unmounting the strut and using the spare hole to mount it further back in the box. That will increase the angle of the strut and reduce the force correspondingly on the collective arm. All right, fellas, we're in the home stretch now. We need to make sure that the USB cord does not get ripped out if we trip over it. Tie a knot in the USB cord and put it inside the box before you seat the cable in the notch. Then screw the top plate on top of it and the cable will not pull out. And now we move into our final step, mounting the collective to your chair. You can use a stack of books or some other adjustable height items to sit the box on top of to determine how high and how forward the collective needs to be to be comfortable for you. Once you've determined that, mark that position on the chair side of the box as well as under the chair. Now here we reach a point where how you mount your collective to your chair may differ from mine. The reason is, of course, all chairs are different they're built different and they need to do different things. So I'm gonna describe how I did it and hopefully it works for you. If not, you'll have to come up with a way that works for you. 
I used a tie plate with a lot of holes, link in the description below. The idea was to create something of an L bracket. One side of it would be bolted to the chair side of the box, the other side would be screwed to the underside of the chair. Now this isn't the most flexible or adjustable setup. Once you set it up, it stays that way, you can't really move it. But that is how a collective is, and it works very well for me. I bent the plate so that the long end that goes under the chair would give enough clearance that the collective arm would be able to swing freely without hitting the seat cushion. As you determine where to put the mounting plate, keep in mind the mounted items on the inside of the box. You should avoid the flange area altogether, and you may have to uninstall the Hall Effect sensor temporarily in order to drill through and install the mounting bolts. And then it's on to drilling the pre-marked pattern of holes on the underside of the chair. My chair has a plywood base, so I'll be drilling into wood. Your chair may be constructed differently, so your mounting method will be different. Flip the chair over, and now your fully functional collective is attached to your chair and ready to go. I hope it brings a new appreciation to your helicopter adventures and raises your skill and precision to the next level. I look forward to your questions and comments, and until next time, may the feeling of that rotor wash over you.